Oh, wonderful to be here. My name is Lenis. I am a wellness engineer, actually trained as a chemical engineer, worked in industry for 16 years. And now what I do is I help women in STEM let go of all the stress and chaos that comes with being in a male-dominated field and create more ease, impact, and fulfillment at the end of the day. I am also an accumulator, nurturer, ruler in that order. So I can relate to Denise's ruler uh, part of how we tend to run the business. <laughs> Was there anything surprising or when you found out that you were accumulator and also some of the things that we talk about, you know, of um, sometimes penny pinching ways and being how uh, frugality can really impact accumulators to grow their business. Was there anything that was a big aha for you around learning some of that? Oh my goodness. I think for me, the first realization just with the archetypes is that not everybody thinks like me, like an accumulator. <laughs> that was a big smack in the face. And another part was just, given me context on why I struggle so much in my previous marriage and relationship to be married to someone that was his sense of safety did not come from seeing money in the bank. My sense of safety comes from seeing money and having that cushion in the bank. So for me, it was we he was a big risk taker and seeing us living paycheck to paycheck just caused me so much emotional baggage and having clarity that, wait a minute, as an accumulator, this is what makes me feel safe. And it's beyond frugality. It's like it truly, my safety comes from seeing the money, saving money, putting it away, like taking care of it so that it can take care of me later on. So for me, that was just a, a tremendous um, awareness that came from, from understanding that I am an accumulator and also like the career choices that I make and the choices in terms of we talked about frugality in the group here and it's like yeah I love to get a bargain it just makes me so happy to get a bargain it's like yes I got that for xyz discount or negotiating um, that really feels good and I, I attribute that to my accumulator for sure. I want to hear a story from your childhood because did your accumulator part show up in it? And I'm just going to turn my aircon off. Hang on. So even though I did business up top, I still am wearing my shorts below. <laughs> I couldn't help it. I was like, should I wear some trousers for this? Um, so you know, did your, did your family have a nickname for you around your frugality? Did, were there accumulator habits that you could see coming up as, as a kid? Were there things that your friends teased you about around your frugality? Or is there something that really sticks out in your mind um, that really showcases you as a little baby accumulator? I definitely grew up with uh, accumulators being drilled into my mind. There was always you got to save money, you got to put money away. And when I will get an allowance, uh, very similar to what Steph was sharing is just like, okay, so this money is for whatever you want to buy for lunch, but then whatever is left over, you can use for whatever you want, or, or, you know, you can buy your own, if you like a cute pencil, things like that, right? They'll give me the, the major things, but I just two stories came up to mind. The first one was I was maybe five years old and my parents tell this story where I was in the back of a Volkswagen and I was with another kid and I was eating that's probably Cheetos or something like that and he ate his like very quickly and then it's like all right can you give me some and I was like no this is mine like you ate it all fast like <laughs> so thinking about it, it's like uh yeah I was no this is mine I'm not sharing this is uh, something that and then my parents would be like you have to be you have to share you have to be nice and it was forced for me it didn't come natural for me to want to share this and late, later I was maybe 10 years old and they used to have like the little figurines in cereals so I would buy 
like multiple boxes so I could collect all the different figurines. And I remember I had them until my teen years. It was just accumulating them and on the side. It was just, I love seeing those things um, and being able to get them all, right? It was just not the one or the two. It's like, get them all. I want them all. I want all the different ones. So that was that was what comes to mind on how my accumulators show up when I was young. It was just getting those uh, little things and just wanting to keep them. Um, so the next thing I'd want to get everyone to ask, and so we're going Steph, Jenny, Lennis, Katie, and Susan, you're going last on this one, is um, finding out about some of your other archetypes and letting them come in. I want to hear what that has shifted and changed in your business. So Susan, you already um, talked to about how you hired um, someone in your business to take that out. But is there something that you've shifted around the clients you've worked with? And feel free to post this in the comments too if you um, if you think of things, you know, multiple things that you want to say around it. But it's like, did you shift your clients? Did you shift your marketing or your pricing or your business model? We've mentioned that before too. Knowing that you don't have to just be in your accumulator side all the time in your business. Oh my goodness. Knowing my other top archetypes was such a blessing for me. Number one, I think as we're hearing with the rulers, right? It's the constantly working, constantly doing. And for me, that was also a numbing mechanism because I didn't want to go through the process of healing like the little traumas that I was carrying in my life. I was just constantly doing. And that's what I saw um, as a role model for my mom. So recognizing that ruler and saying, I can lean into your strengths, but you don't have to ruler over me <laughs> kind of mentality was really important. And then the other one, which is nurturer, I, I love the idea and I am a natural nurturer. I love taking care of my family, taking care of the people that I love, um, very over giving to the point of stretching myself too much. So bringing that back a little bit and actually using the nurturer towards me, shifting that energy for myself. That was a huge shift because as accumulators, right? It's like, well, I accumulate things and I complete things and then I have to work really, really hard. And then the nurturer is like, it's only for the external. It's only for people outside. So for me, it was just bringing it in and using the nurturer for myself was a giant gift. And in terms of how it impacted my business, I was able to let go of trying to do a one-on-one -on -one coaching system because it the perfectionism from the accumulator and the roller, I just wanted to like move into my client's house and make them do some work. And that was just such a nightmare. <laughs> so I completely shifted my model to be similar to what Jenny was saying that I'm the consultant here. This is all the knowledge that I've accumulated. This is what you need to do. And these are the exercises, but I'm not doing it for you. So that was a big um, shift for my business. And now I, the way I work is I work as a group and I see it much more enriching for the women to collaborate with each other. And for me to keep that ruler in the back of not wanting to like keep pushing them to work harder, <laughs> which I'm, I'm trying to do the opposite. So recognizing it was just a giant aha for me just to bring the other two archetypes and play with them, lean more into, I need my nurturer right now a little bit more than my ruler, or I need my ruler right now when I'm launching my business versus um, my accumulator or nurturer. So just playing with them has been fantastic. So one thing for me is I am not precise. You guys know this, right? I never know the dates. I never know the details of things. I never know how much things are going to cost because Mark deals with that and I cannot keep it in my brain. So I'm always surprised that accumulators buy from me. I really am. And um, But the last round we did SMA, accumulators were the top. And they're always in the top three, which really surprises me because surely I annoy your accumulator side. And I, so I, I'm just going to open this. We don't even need to go around on this one. If you've got something to say, because I'm going to pull out some like really specific questions, put up your hand. Yeah. Okay. Lennis, you've got something to say straight away. Go for it. Well, 
I think it's the challenging that you're challenging how we operate. And that sparks curiosity. It's like, wait a minute, there's a different way? Like, really? And just that challenge of, hey, you know, this messaging that you've been getting, let's, let's put it in a way that it's going to help you. And that is what attracted me. It's like, if I can have a framework that is going to help me understand myself and understand how I work with others, I'm totally in. And I remember when I joined SMA, one of the things about accumulators is like, we love to read the whole page about everything that we're getting. So I knew it's like, look at all this value that I'm getting from signing up. So that was the other attractive part. It was just being able to have like, all the bullet points and like, and you're going to get this much and this is the support that you will have. And this is the community that you will have access to. For me, it was just the personally, it was just challenging this, the way that I thought putting words into it, giving me a framework and also giving me all the information that I needed to feel safe to make that investment. So what, what really annoys you about the entrepreneurial world or the personal development world? And what's something that always turns you off from buying a program? Like what are, you, what are your red flags or what are your things where you just go, oh my God, I don't, I don't trust that person. Um, and then I have a question as well, if anyone wants to speak to this, you know, is it important to you to know that, for example, I have a marketing degree? You know, what's, what turns you off? What's really important to you that we haven't heard so far? Like what makes you trust people and what makes you immediately skeptical? Because there are a lot of people in this world who are so wishy-washy and, um, you know, it can be really annoying. So I'd love to hear some specifics. Who's got something that they can think of straight away? Yeah, I was going to say the books sell me more than the degree, <laughs> personally, just like. Oh, yeah, that was the other thing. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, it's like, oh, she's a published author and she wrote yeah. three books for me somehow has more meaning than, oh, she has a marketing degree. That, that, that was just going back to the beginning. But one of the things that I definitely the pushy sales um, are, are, are a turn off for me. But, but the other one is like the and this may be a different thing for celebrities. Right. But the whole shiny car, fancy car uh, ads on YouTube and hey, I made, I broke $10 million this year just by blah, blah, blah. And like that for me is a turn off, but it's also from my personal experience with um, other coaches and mentors that I've invested, the ones that, that where I've had negative experiences are the ones that tell you, oh, I have all the answers and this is what you have to do. Versus now, here is the information and you consume it and process it. Like for me, that has been a giant bell of, okay, you, you can give me the framework, but I also have to try it for myself and adapt it to how it works for me. So I think this is why SMA is so magnificent because it's just giving you the strengths and the weaknesses. Now it's on you to apply it into your own life and business. So um, I, I really like that. For sacred money archetypes, it feels a little bit more of an urgent decision. So does that freak you out? And, you know, I've heard from accumulators, they hate things like countdown timers and bonuses going away. But sometimes that's the thing that makes you guys do it. Otherwise, you might get stuck in analysis paralysis for a long time. So is there stuff like that that you kind of, it triggers you, but it also makes you, you know, feel like, okay, it's, I'm ready now. And where, do you, and where do you buy? Do you buy on the webinar or do you buy the last minute? That's really interesting. Yeah, Lana, I'm going to say I bought on the webinar because I knew, like you said, hey, for the next 24 hours, you're going to get the best deal. And this is the biggest discount. And I was like, I'm buying right now. And I remember like texting the support and Mark. It's like, hey, I'm also in bootcamp. What is the discount for <laughs> those who are joining from bootcamp? And so, yeah, getting all that for me, that was like that sense of urgency helped me. But I already knew you and liked you and trusted you. So I think it's, it's part of it um, that, that helped. This is so this is so juicy, guys. I'm really, really loving this conversation. I hope it's given you some ideas too about 
you know, whether you're marketing to accumulators or even non-accumulators, right? Because you'll be surprised to know like romantics, they always join the program. They have no idea what they've bought. They just felt like it at the time. They're always the ones in like week five or six going, hey guys, what is this program I've just bought? Have you seen those posts where people go, what, am, where am I? <laughs> what happened? Who are you people? And you go, what? Or they're the ones who, you know, they haven't done anything and they just, they just soak it up via osmosis. Um, yeah, it's really, really funny. So um, does anyone have any la last things to say? Because I want to be respectful of your time, obviously, but I could talk about this for so long with you guys. It's fascinating. Yeah, I was going to say kind of what Susan said in terms of like you refresh it and you change the images and you do all of that. So I know that what I'm getting, it's, it's pretty cool um, that I'll get access to the up updates, right? That I'll always get access to the updates because of that lifetime access. The other thing I was going to tell you is that you've helped me so much give myself permission of changing my mind. Because when you start a bootcamp, I remember it's like, I'm only launching it twice a year or I only open it for this. And then you switch to a different model and then you switch to a different model. And just hearing you now say, hey, I'm probably going to do it this way only for like two more years because of the bandwidth and just giving yourself permission of evolving. I think for your, um, for people that join and participate, it's also very eye-opening to see there's many different ways. And just because a business model works for you right now, doesn't mean that it has to stay fixed for the rest of your life. So I think that's part of your maverick that comes up and it's like, okay, I've done it this way. So I want to switch it up. Um, that really has had such a positive influence on me and, and my rule thereof. I can change my mind. I have permission to do that. <laughs> oh, okay, you guys, thank you so much. I'll, I will see you in this round of, of um, SMA. I can't wait. And thank you again for your time and your generosity. Yeah. So are you a ruler, a connector or a maverick? Hang on, maybe you're more of a romantic or a celebrity. Take the money personality quiz right now and find out which of the eight money archetypes you are. And then I'm gonna teach you how to profit from your strengths and make money in your business based on your natural personality. Click below and find out more.